welcome. Welcome to St Peter's All Age online service. It's really great that you can uh, join us and our thoughts and prayers continue uh, to be with you uh, through this strange time. And I hope that you've been in ab able to enjoy uh, the sunshine that's been out part of this uh, week. We're following a theme, looking at Jesus meeting people, encountering people, and the difference that Jesus makes to people's lives and to our lives. And in today's story, here's a little sweetener, uh, it reminds me of who the God is that we're praying to, worshipping, and who is this God who is so wonderfully with us. Today, as always, we're going to meet Jesus who cares, Jesus who gives himself to us, Jesus who comes to this beautiful world with its laughter and fun, but who also comes to the place of our tears, our pain, our, our sorrow, our loneliness and our emptiness. You'll hear in the story, uh, if you listen carefully, that Jesus' heart went out to a woman who was very sad. And every time we come to worship, Jesus' heart comes out to us. He comes to meet us where we are, how we feel, how life is going at the moment. So as we draw close to Jesus, he draws close to us. Friends, let us pray. Loving Jesus, thank you that you are the God of love and that you care for us and care for those that we live alongside day by day. Forgive us where we forget to live out your love or receive your love. Help us to be open to you, open to your spirit, open to all that you have for us. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's time to sing.
Today's reading is from Luke chapter 7, beginning to read of verse 11. Jesus raises the widow's son at Nain. Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her, and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the bier, and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favourably on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, as we come to reflect upon the Bible reading we have heard today, let's begin with a prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word, the Bible. As we think a little bit more about the Bible passage we have heard, so help us to see something more of who you are and then help us to love you more. Amen. Well, I expect that many joining today uh, are fans of the Marvel superheroes. I have to be honest that I am not very well up on the superheroes of today. But when I was a child, I used to watch the old Wonder Woman uh, TV shows. Um, and my sister's children, knowing that I used to watch those Wonder Woman shows, um, and I think because they, they sort of see me as a Wonder Woman, um, they, they bought me this um, Lego figure of Wonder Woman that I had to make up. So she sits in my study to remind me that I am a Wonder Woman. Well, anyway, if, if you're not familiar with Wonder Woman, basically, a woman called Diana Prince, she did a really boring job. And she wore glasses and her hair was always tied up. But then at certain times she would spin around, her glasses would, would just disappear, her hair would come down and she would appear in her Wonder Woman costume. I also used to watch her, the Superman films and similarly Clark Kent did a boring job. He too wore glasses. He would go into a phone box and he would come out, his glasses would have gone, his hair would be slicked back and he'd be in his Superman costume. Well, I mean, you've obviously noticed I wear glasses. Hmm? Just saying. Yeah. Well, these sorts of superheroes, Wonder Woman and Superman. Now, I remember them. They used to fight the baddies. They used to fight injustice. They quite literally used to fight, you know, they'd pick people up and throw them and whatever. But no one used to know them when they'd go back to their everyday lives. You know, without their glasses on, people didn't recognise, oh, Diana is, is actually Wonder Woman. Mm, glasses don't make that much uh, difference to your appearance, but hey-ho, there we are. Well, a few years ago in the church where I served as reader, I started a, a holiday club and the theme of that first holiday club was superheroes. But throughout the holiday club, we led the children to realise that Jesus was actually, is actually greater than any superhero. And in fact, we had a, a theme song that would play uh, twice every day of the holiday club. Uh, Jesus is my superhero. Some of you kids might have, have seen it, seen the video. Let's just say by the end of the holiday club, I hated that song, but the kids loved it and danced to it. 
Well, the Bible reading that we've just heard is one of the most wonderful accounts of Jesus, which prove that Jesus is indeed greater than any of these superheroes. There's no superhero costume in our reading. There's no fighting. But there's something far more amazing. At this point in St Luke's Gospel, Jesus has just healed the slave of a Roman centurion without going anywhere near the slave. I mean, that itself was an amazing miracle. But we find Jesus now in a small town near Nazareth called Nain. And as Jesus is approaching the town, he's got his disciples and a large crowd of followers who are thinking, what's, what's this man going to do next? And Jesus sees a funeral procession. A dead man is being carried out of the town to be buried. And a woman is following. Now, Jesus has never met this woman. But he instantly knows that she is a widow and that this dead man is her only son. So her husband has died and now her only son has died. And she is therefore in a most desperate situation. In first century Palestine, men looked after the women. So husbands looked after their wives. Sons looked after their mothers. There's no benefits at this time for someone who's in financial difficulty, who has no money, who has no man to work for her. So this woman is not only grieving for her son, but she knows and Jesus knows that life is going to be very difficult for her going forward without a man to look after her. And St Luke tells us that when the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her. And St Luke is telling us two things in this one short phrase. Firstly, for the first time in his gospel, he calls Jesus the Lord. In other words, he's telling us his readers, that Jesus is God, because the Lord is the title used for God. But secondly, St Luke, in describing Jesus's response when he sees this woman, lets us see in Jesus the character of God, the love of God. Jesus looks at this sad procession and he is grieved. He's grieved for this woman that he sees. His heart is filled with sorrow and love. And then he does three things which would have made people think he was very strange. He tells the mother not to cry. Her son has just died and he says, don't cry. But then he touches the mat on which the dead man is being carried. Now, in those days, to touch anything connected with a dead person would have made you unclean. So people would have been thinking, why is this stranger doing this? He's now made himself unclean. And the third thing Jesus does is to say, young man, I say to you, rise. And to the amazement of everyone, the young man sits up and begins, begins to speak. Jesus, the Lord, shows us 
not only the love of God, but the amazing power of God. He can bring the dead back to life. And of course, as we continue reading the Gospels, we know of the resurrection of Jesus, which proves completely that God in Jesus has power over what so many people are afraid of, death. Yes. Here truly is someone who is far greater than any superhero of our comics and our films. Yes, he knows people. He knows you and he knows me and he understands us completely. He understands all that is going on in our lives. And he cares. And he loves us. When we are sad, he is sad. And he has complete power over everything, even death. In St John's Gospel, we hear Jesus saying this about himself. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. Yes, death is not the end for those who trust in Jesus Christ. It is the beginning of a new life in heaven. Well, sadly, at the end of our reading, a bit like what I said about Superman or Wonder Woman at the beginning, who are not recognised when they put their glasses back on. In a similar way, no one recognises that Jesus is God. They praise God for what has happened and they go, wow, isn't this wonderful? But they just see Jesus as a great prophet. But I know, and I hope that you know, that Jesus is none other than the God of love and the God of supreme power. For our intercessions today, I will end each prayer with, Lord, in your mercy, if you would like to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we lift for your blessing our broken world, ravaged by virus. We pray for all who have lost loved ones and are grieving, for all who are alone due to restrictions, and those who are missing the closeness and hugs from their family and friends. We give you thanks for the vaccine, which is offering us all a light at the end of this dark tunnel, for all who volunteer in practical ways, food parcels or a wave through the window, sharing your love and hope to the lonely and afraid. We are grateful that we have experienced the best of human nature in this crisis. But most of all, we give thanks that you have been with us every step of the way. May we all keep you close and be grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask for your continued blessing on our Queen and her family. We give thanks that she spoke up so bravely recently, encouraging all to receive the vaccine to help one another in this way. We ask for your wisdom and guidance to world leaders to make wise decisions to lead us onwards. And we pray for all who are suffering financially as a result of the virus restrictions. Give them strength and hope for the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children for babies who have not yet been able to meet grandparents and extended family, for new parents struggling to cope without their help, for older children missing school and school friendships, 
for those who are unable to take the exams that they have worked towards for so long, and for those starting university or college in isolation, for the children of key workers in their enforced sacrifice of not being able to see mummy and daddy often, if at all. And we ask for your blessing on all teachers and support staff in schools, going above and beyond to provide lessons and support to the children and their families. We pray that the day that the children and we can all be together again is near. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we give thanks for Kip, Julia, Tim, James and the team who have worked against all difficulties to bring us our church service every week. We pray that we can soon meet together again in the building. And let's end our intercessions by having a few moments of quiet to pray for that situation that's on your heart and lift it to our loving Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we bring our prayers to a close by saying the family prayer that Jesus taught us together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. stars in outer space You pop the freckles on my face And all the fish that swim and all the birds that fly Were made from your incredible imagination Creator God, we swing into the Creator God of all the worlds Creator God, we celebrate you We celebrate you Spread the ripples through the sea You painted stripes on every bee And all the grass that grows And all the leaves that fall A part of your amazing plans From this creation Creator God We sing into the Creator God Of all the world Creator God We celebrate you We celebrate you Into the sun, you placed a heart in everyone, and all the music played, and all the dancing done reminds us that we're made to be created like Creator God. We sing into the Creator God of all the world, Creator God, to celebrate you. Creator God, we sing into the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. Creator God, we sing into the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. Creator God, we sing into the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. Creator God, we sing into the Creator God of all the world. 
Creator God, we sing to the Creator God of all the world. Creator God, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. Well, once again, thank you for joining us for uh, this week's time of worship. Just a few notices, which is about our family life uh, together. So I hope you'll stay and listen to these. Um, and then I'll say a prayer of blessing. And then there's something really special, as always. Uh, after that. So, uh, first of all, three notices about prayer. Uh, our next prayer meeting uh, will take place on Saturday the 13th of March at nine o'clock on Zoom. All are welcome and it gives us an opportunity uh, to pray for the needs of the church, St Peter's, our nation and the world and individuals we know, as well as give thanks uh, to God, even amidst all that's going on around us. And if you'd like to join, uh, do contact, uh, do email Julia uh, for the Zoom link. The latest issue of the Prayer Journal uh, can be found under the Prayer section of the church website. Uh, you will also find a notice about the next 24-7 Liverpool South Deanery prayer event in the prayer section on the website. Uh, this will take place during Holy Week to make it so special. And we are all encouraged to sign up to pray. It's your choice for half an hour, an hour or a set time each day as we pray for God's hope to be more widely known in our communities. I do remember when we had a 24-7 um, prayer week uh, held in the prayer room in the Simon Peter Centre and it was wonderful how many people came and there were prayers written on paper all over the walls and what a lovely opportunity to repeat that uh, in uh, on Zoom and so on. So. Um, uh, now a really piece of exciting news. Uh, Marie Raffi, uh, who's been a member of St Peter's, a reader here at St Peter's, she's being licensed to St Michael's Highton Parish Church. So let's, uh, this Sunday, and so let's pray for her and for Julian as they move to a new chapter in their very special ministry and lives. Uh, let's just pause for a moment to, to pray for uh, Marie and Julian. Loving Lord, uh, pray that you would give uh, Marie all the courage, wisdom, strength and love to work together with all those parts of St Michael's family church and with the community. And we pray that through her, and through the body of Christ there, your kingdom would come and you give her every encouragement in that new ministry and be with her and Julian and surround them with your love and care. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Nearly the end of the notices, but just... Uh, Two things to share. After the blessing, there's going to be that brilliant uh, little advertisement for uh, Bible reading and prayer app um, that's received a lot of praise. And then finally, uh, during March, all through the final section of the online service, uh, we're following a theme of giving. Uh, because God wants us to be a church full of generosity and it's really special that 
uh, today we have Captain Louise Brown uh, from the, Fr the Fresh Expressions Leader at Strawberry Field. And I do believe what she has to share is a word for our time. Now to the blessing. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts, minds and homes and lives in the love of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and with all those you meet this week, now and forever. Amen. God bless. YouVersion is a Bible app available on the App Store or Google Play. The app offers access to different Bible versions, a verse for the day, audio Bibles, prayer journaling and Bible plans. The plans offer short daily readings on specific topics or sections of the Bible for you to read on your own or together with friends who have the app. Such an easy way to connect with God and others each day. I love it. Within the app, there is also a short, simple daily devotion and prayer suitable for an older primary school child for you to read together. And for the younger child, there is a version Bible app just for them with great animations and interactive learning. I would highly recommend this app and it's free. So why not give it a try? Well, good morning, friends. It's really good to be able to share with you this morning something about being able to give the gift of time and space to people. Well, I guess over the past year in this pandemic, there's nobody on this earth who can say that they've not been impacted by COVID-19. And of course, for some people, it's meant loss of life. It's meant loss of loved ones, of friends. For some, they're still suffering the after effects of COVID and, and they have long COVID. For others, it's been more about loss of finances, loss of jobs, worry and anxiety about what's going to happen to families. And there's so much uncertainty well, thank God that there's some light at the end of the tunnel. Thank God for vaccinations and all that's happening now as we begin to think about coming out of lockdown. And that's great news. But I don't think we can escape this kind of grief that we have all been experiencing. And of course, we know grief expresses itself in all sorts of different ways. There are all sorts of stages and processes to go through but I think the kind of living grief that we're experiencing now um, makes every day a bit more difficult. I remember at the beginning of pandemic I said to myself well what do I do now? Strawberry Field as a centre had to close of course. Uh, it was important that we stayed connected and worked with our trainees 
it was important that we encouraged our, our staff, many of whom had to be furloughed. But I asked myself, what do I do now? Of course, there were practical needs. And as a Salvation Army, you know that we're known as being activists. So there were practical needs, but many organisations and um, people in the community came together to support in practical ways, which was brilliant. And so I've realised over this past year that the greatest gift I could give to people was the gift of time, of being able to listen, whether it's just a phone call, a Zoom call, a gathering people on Zoom, or walking with people individually at a distance. And in fact, I've found over the past year that's been uh, such a transforming experience for me and the people I've walked with. And it's not easy having conversation at a distance, trying to keep safe. Um, but on those walks, I've really been able to listen. And often people have found it easier to talk when you're walking and you're not face to face with somebody. So I've really been able to listen and notice how somebody is doing. And I've loved looking at this passage in Luke chapter 7. And maybe it's a passage normally I might skip over and think there's Jesus performing another miracle. But I've been able to look at this and see that there are things we can learn from the behaviour and response of Jesus in this passage. And I just want to briefly share with you that firstly, I think we can see that Jesus notices this woman. And Jesus is with a crowd and his disciples and comes across this crowd of mourners. But Jesus notices this widow who has lost everything and is now going to be destitute because her only son has died. Jesus sees her. And he says to her, don't cry. And we may think, for goodness sake, Jesus, you know, why did you say don't cry? That's the last thing you would say to somebody in the middle of such grief. But I think those words from Jesus are um, his kind of response with a deep compassion. He's saying, don't cry. But he's saying, I'm here and I've got this. And then we see the miracle and Jesus raises her son to life. And she's not asked for that. She's not expressed any kind of faith. But Jesus raises her son to life and there's transformation. And her world in those moments is turned upside down. So maybe we can learn from this. It's important that we notice people. It's important that we notice what's going on for them. And it may be just noticing people in your family, those who are close to you. You know, maybe one day somebody's snappy and, and that might be quite normal. But um, if somebody somebody's behaviour begins to change a bit, are they expressing some of that grief I was just talking about? Are we really noticing what's going on for other people and for ourselves. Secondly, can we respond with compassion? And I don't know about you, but I've noticed people getting really angry over the past year. But they're going to notice how we respond. So can we respond with compassion? And thirdly, can we trust Jesus to keep doing the work of transformation? And we may have all sorts of questions just now. Why? Why have the certain things happened? Um, and, and we don't have all the answers. And maybe in some areas we really wanted to see Jesus transform things and change things for people and he hasn't done it. But over the past years I've walked with people and journeyed with them and listened to them. I've been able to notice the transforming power of the Holy Spirit in their hearts and in my heart. 
and that's been a real privilege. And we read in Luke 7 that after this miracle, people then went and told and the word spread about what had happened. That's what we want, isn't it? We want people to be talking and buzzing about Jesus and about the transforming power of God. So let's try maybe this week just to notice more, to really listen. And then let's try to respond with compassion to ourselves and to others. And then let's trust Jesus, that he is doing his work of transformation in and through you and me. So God bless you this week.